Hello Internet, my name is Dias Always. I'm a theoretical physicist and mathematician, and my mission is to create the world's first full-body exoskeleton system. Now, this is ambitious, and if at all possible, I cannot do this alone. So therefore, welcome to Nova Machina. So, I want to give you guys a quick update on Project Dahlia. Project Dahlia is the connecting machine between our two existing technologies, that being Project Gaia with our sensor technology and Project Alita with our artificial muscle technology. These two technologies do not quite communicate yet and Project Dahlia is intended to serve as the connection and also the central control hub of our eventual exoskeleton tech. Now we've tried this before. That prototype went all right. It showed that technically such a module that translates signals the way we need it to happen is possible. It, however, did break quite quickly. So this time we're going to test a slightly more durable design that hopefully preserves its functionality or improves it. So this is the experimental setup. We've recycled the old little arm frame from Project Alita and we've just installed a new artificial muscle. In the back here we've tried to encapsulate all of the parts associated with Dahlia. So this is a relatively independent module now. We're going to feed it signals that are not exactly from our Gaia type sensors that would introduce too many variables. We're just giving it a predictable fake signal that is very much like what we would expect to come from our Gaia type sensors. So it took a few weeks to construct everything but eventually we were able to do our first experiments. I held back quite seriously on the uh, first contraction. The muscle almost did not contract, except for a few... What do you call that? I'm not sure what to call that. Flinches. Flinch? I don't know. And this was also to be expected. I turned down the baseline power and I turned down the signal strength that we were sending to our artificial muscle. So, yeah, we didn't expect much. However, I should probably explain to you what I mean with this baseline power, because that has a strong connection with what we're doing with these Dahlia modules. Let me draw it out for you. Now, what we would do before is we would connect our artificial muscle directly to the potential from which it takes its energy. Let's call that the base metabolism. And in order to control the artificial muscle, we would simply turn off and on the entire machine that would provide this base metabolism. And that wasn't exactly a good way of doing things. The base metabolism is designed to be able to support dozens of artificial muscles. So control per single artificial muscle through the metabolism, that didn't make sense. This is why we are creating the Dahlia module. The Dahlia module takes in signals from our Gaia type sensors, it can tap into the potential that is the base metabolism and it can distribute according to the instructions from the Gaia type sensors, it can distribute that power to artificial muscles in order to contract. What the Dahlia module can also do is it can read out what the artificial muscle is doing and provide a force feedback. Now the strength of these modules and why this is such an important step for the future is that we can connect multiple of these modules to the base metabolism. To each Dahlia module we can connect multiple artificial muscles. So the future of this exoskeleton idea of this technology for it to be a seriously scalable solution for the entire human body. For that we need to be successful in creating these modules. So we now have two parameters that we can play with to set up an experiment. We can play with the signal strength that we send to our Dahlia module for a contraction, but we can also play with the strength of the base metabolism, with the base potential from which the Dahlia module and artificial muscle can pull power. This is what we started doing with test number two. We turned up the base metabolism to, well, I don't have numerical values, but about medium settings. We then gave it a very, very minute signal, which would still cause a fairly conservative contraction, but that's not what happened. What happened was almost more an explosion than a, than a contraction. The artificial muscle contracted so forcefully that it tore apart the entire assembly. Now, that was unintentional and it showed a flaw in our design. The Dahlia module takes in energy from the base metabolism and the signal, and it outputs a contraction from the artificial muscle. As a response to a successful contraction, the force feedback system turns on and starts outputting information to the person operating uh, a little interface that I made. The thing that went wrong is that all these signals, they speak different languages. They are based in a different kind of physics. However, the force feedback system working could cause a 
let's call it noise, that could interfere with the input signal. So once the force feedback system was turned on, the output signal of the force feedback system could leak into the input channel and <laughs> cause a positive feedback loop, causing an exponential increase in what the Dahlia module would interpret as an input channel. Which to say, it just went all in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, that pulled apart the entire assembly. The solution was just to physically separate these channels and then with a bit of redesign, we could continue testing. Now, the result of this we can see in test number four. I redesigned the Dahlia module and we started doing contractions with medium metabolism turned on and a variation of input signals. The thing is, the contractions by this time of the artificial muscle were quite underwhelming, which generally tends to say, okay, the artificial muscle itself wasn't working quite right. So this was reason to just ditch that artificial muscle and make a new one that was a bit more appropriately sized for this specific test arm. And that's when we get to tests five until seven, where we still had this underwhelming performance of the artificial muscle, which meant, okay, I didn't make that one quite right. It's just, I'd been seeing this problem quite a lot that some artificial muscles just do not want to work. But we now have the, uh, the opportunity to test actually what's going on because we have the force feedback system. So that's what I started doing. I started feeling through the force feedback system what the muscle was doing and if I could figure out anything that was going wrong. What I found out is that even after repairs, even after reassembling the artificial muscle, the resistance, even when the contraction was successful, would be tremendous which first I thought might be a problem with calibrating the force feedback, but it wasn't a calibration problem. The problem is that the artificial muscles experience a systematic high resistance through some kind of interference. And I figured out the interference happens between the outer layer, which is structural, and the inner layer, which, which does the, the, the physical work. That interference, it's not sometimes there and sometimes not. It's always there, but sometimes it's too much and the muscle works awfully. And sometimes it's not that bad and the muscle can actually perform. And that's why we have been successful in making some artificial muscles that were really good and some that never really worked. Now to test that hypothesis, I thought, okay, let's just ditch the flexible howl that we've been using that's causing interference. Let's just use some fixed tubing that does the structural work that the flexible hull is supposed to do, but without all the complex shapes in which it can bend, without the potential interference. I, I wasn't quite sure if tubing would also not interfere, but you want to test variables. Yeah, we just used some tubing, we're laying about, but then when we tested it after breaking once more, the results were really good. The range of motion was excellent. But to be frank, I got so confident that I turned up metabolism to its maximum setting, and then we started feeding it small signals, and we see that the arm would indeed only move small parts, more than I thought it would, so we need to work on precision, but it was working. And then we did a full power, full signal strength test, and the contractions that came from that, I don't know, I was really happy with that. So it seems that in our journey to create the Dahlia modules, we've actually found a serious mistake in our artificial muscle design. Eventually, <laughs> in playing so much with the high power settings, I did break the module again. It was a part that I knew was under-engineered, so... And it's a, it's a problem that I've solved on paper, it's just something that we have to construct. Which is to say that Project Dahlia is going all right. Um, we've improved our artificial muscle technology and we now need to make things even more sturdy and a bit more precise uh, to create these uh, high-power small movements. They are probably quite important for the future, so we should work on that. I think for next time we should stop feeding the experiment fake signals. We should just use signals directly from my own body and then see if the emotions coincide. Anyways, that was it for me for today. Thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you guys next time and cheers.